Hey everyone, welcome to section 3 of Learn PHP the Right Way series. As you may know, the first section was beginner friendly and mostly covered procedural PHP with a lot of topics to get you started. Second section covered object oriented PHP with more intermediate topics like MVC, routing, MySQL, PDO and so on. Now we're starting the third section of the series that will contain more advanced topics. In this video we're going to quickly go over the topics that you can expect to be covered in this section and then we'll jump straight into testing. Before we get started please do me a favor and hit the like button if you enjoyed my videos and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. It really helps promote my videos to reach a wider audience and developers like you. Let's review what you can expect from the third section of the series. We'll begin the section with introduction to testing which is part of this video and then move on to PHP unit and actually write some tests. After that we'll talk about dependency injection and dependency injection containers. I know I've been hinting at it for a while now so we'll finally get a chance to cover it. We'll also cover the basics of APIs, how to make API calls, what is JSON, some PHP magic through reflection API, generators, some more PHP 8 features like attributes and so on. There will also be topics about caching, some security, scheduled jobs and more. And finally, towards the end of the series, we'll work on a full project that we'll actually set up the hosting for and deploy it. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see a specific topic covered in this series and I might include some of the suggested topics. With that out of the way, let's move on to testing. Writing tests is important and also it's considered a good practice. When you build an app or add a new feature to an existing app or simply decide to refactor some functionality, you usually end up testing all the affected parts manually or seek assistance from the QA team to do the manual testing. While QA teams are great and manual testing is good, making a small change or a refactor should not require a full retest of a lot of affected functionality. This is where automated testing can be beneficial. By writing tests you gain the level of confidence so that when it's time to refactor or make changes to the code you're not afraid of breaking the functionality. Without tests you would usually hesitate on making any changes to an existing functionality in fear of breaking something. On the other hand, with proper tests, if you make a change that introduces a bug, your app will fail before your changes end up in production, thus saving you a headache and a sleepless night. There are different types of testing techniques and frameworks. We'll talk a little bit about TDD and BDD towards the end of the video, so make sure to stick around. As far as the types goes, we have things like accessibility testing, end-to-end -end testing, functional testing, integration testing, loads testing, regression testing, unit testing and the list goes on. We're not going to talk about all of them of course but we'll talk about unit and integration tests. Unit testing ensures that a small unit or small piece of code is doing what it is intended to do and works as expected. It does not connect to a database and does not resolve any dependencies, instead it uses mocks and stops whenever needed. Unit tests are generally simple and fast and if you catch issues at this stage it's typically a lot easier to resolve them. Integration testing ensures that certain functionality or modules work as expected when put together. Dependencies in integration testing can be resolved instead of being mocked or only parts of it can be mocked if needed. It can also connect to the database if needed and so on. Here is a pretty common meme that you might see online when comparing integration with unit tests. When you look at these two items here, both of them pass the unit tests and they work as expected in isolation. However, when you put them together, they fail. This is what integration tests should be testing basically. It tests multiple classes or modules working together. There are many testing frameworks and tools that can be used to automate all of this. We'll be using and covering PHP unit in this series and we'll talk about it in the next lesson so make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell icon so you don't miss it. Before we wrap up this video let's talk a little bit about the terms TDD and BDD that you may have heard before. TDD stands for Test Driven Development and BDD stands for Behavior Driven Development. In both TDD and BDD the tests are written first and the code is written after. In TDD the process is usually like this. You write the test with the test case, you run it which will obviously fail, then you write the code to make the test pass and then you repeat the steps while also refactoring and organizing the code. With BDD the steps are pretty much the same but instead of writing tests or test cases you write 
right behaviors in simple English. It's actually not that simple to achieve TDD in a real world application because a lot of times the scope of the project changes quite often or some unpredictable things pop up in the middle or at the end of the project that requires a lot of changes. So TDD may not work for everyone. I personally don't follow TDD because it simply does not work for me. I prefer to write tests after and not before the code. That being said though, this does not mean that TDD, BDD or any other technique or methods are bad. They are really good and if you can follow them that is awesome and it will be very beneficial to you and your team. However, if you can't follow it, it's not the end of the world as long as you still write the proper tests even if you write them after you've written the code. This is it for this video. Thank you so much for all the support and thank you for watching this video. If you're looking forward to the third and final section of the series, hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. As always, I appreciate any feedback so don't hesitate to post any questions or feedback in the comments. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.